Daniela Martin. I'm an edible insect advocate. Uh, my, blog, my, blog, my blog, girlmeetsbug.com. I teach people how and why they should eat bugs. My motto is, eat bugs, save the world. Now, uh, the technical term for eating insects is entomophagy. Ento for insect and phage for ear. Uh, now, once you find out how prevalent this, co this practice really is, you'll wonder why we don't have a more common word for it. Of course, we are open to suggestions. Now, you may have read in recent media that insects are a wonderful, eco-friendly alternative to other forms of conventional livestock. Crickets require like 10 times less food and 1,000 times less water to produce the same amount of usable protein as something like beef. Uh, they also contribute far less to things like greenhouse gas causing emissions. Cows uh, contribute directly with the methane, indirectly with all the deforestation that's required in order to make farms for them. By contrast, ins insects can be farmed vertically in urban areas and even indoors because they just don't need as much space. They're a great alternative. They're also super, super nutritious. As you can see, grasshoppers have like twice the iron of beef and like 35 times the calcium, crickets 75 times the calcium, three times the iron. So, you know, it's it's really quite an amazing thing, but despite all of this, some people still think eating insects is really weird. But I'm here to tell you that it's not, it's in fact the most normal thing that you can do. First of all, the FDA already allows a surprising level of uh, edible insect fragments in all of our presents. <laughs> you go out to eat with your friends and have pizza and beer. You guys are probably getting upwards of 100 fragments of peas. That's what, five bits of bits per bite? So this is a lot. You can eat all your processed food. So basically, if you can eat a uh, Ground up insects and all your processed food. That goes back to the very beginning. You've been eating this ever since you could eat food at all. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, this is important uh, because. <laughs> you know, okay, it goes back farther than that. The very first primates, known as harshers, were big insectivores. That's pretty much all they ate. And because the insects are great food, they're great energy. Even bugs that were bigger than them, they tried to eat. But as we evolved, we also branched out. Now this had nothing to do against insects, it's just that as we grew larger, we couldn't find enough of them, right? So we had to turn to things like fruits and leaves, which couldn't run away. Now the problem with fruits and leaves is they are actually lower density foods. They're lower value foods. So leaves might be considered sort of nutritional economics here. Dollar bills, whereas termites might be five to a big grasshopper that's 10 bucks, right? A whole, you know, anthill, that's like $100. <laughs> so this is great, right? But so that's why things like gorillas had to develop these ginormous frames in order to have these big digestive systems so they could break down piles of leaves and these specialized bacteria so they could break down the cellulose and extract the protein so they can sustain themselves on this kind of diet. By the way, they eat bugs every chance they get. <laughs> Chimpanzees are so convinced of the power and, and the value of, of insects that they spend hours a day and have constructed these highly complex sets of toolkits that they use that researchers can't even use because it takes a lot of skill. And this is kind of like that old adage, you know, the Chinese proverb, don't focus on my finger, focus on the lesson. And, and you know, we've been focusing on these tools, right? And getting at the moon, it's crawling in bugs. Sorry, don't look at my finger, look at the moon. The finger is the lesson, the moon is the goal. Anyway. <laughs> Some of the earliest human tools, human bone tools, were also used to gather termites. Yeah, and that's because Stone Age hunting, you know, we think of Neanderthals and the mammoths, was actually not very successful. I mean, you try hunting with a spear or a sharpened stick, right? So what do you think they were eating in the meantime? Termites! And this is really great because in addition to being really high in protein and iron, termites are high in long-chain fatty acids, which are great for building brain tissue. So next time somebody calls you a bug brain, they might just be stating the obvious. Now, it's weird because things like the paleo diet totally omit this, right? There's nothing about bugs in any of these. And it's weird because all that time that the guys were coming back empty-handed, what do you think they were eating? Bugs. And who do you think was gathering them? Women. Yes. <laughs> Say, wow, it's, it's, it's like somebody took a giant can of Raid to the author's pale imaginations because there's not a single bug in there. Meanwhile, there are a very vital fourth source of food. So jump to present day, and about two-thirds of the world's cultures still eat bugs. So this is something we share not only with our primate ancestors, not only with our primate cousins, but with everybody around the world. This actually, instead of being something totally weird, it unites us with everybody and every living thing that's like <laughs> <laughs> so for this reason, I implore you to open
your minds, open your mouths, and give a chance to the incredible, edible.